G'day there guys, it's your Aussie hubby Marky, back at it again with another r slash entitled parents video. Now if you love me as much as I love you, then you know what to do. I want you to mosey on over to that old like button and tackle it like Crocodile Dundee. Maybe even chuck an Aussie flag down in the comments. Now with that out of the way, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn on the barbie, and get ready for some bloody Karens. Our first boast is by user, oh no, Spaghetti-O. Titled, Entitled Mum Tried to Shame Me for Buying Baby Formula. So I was grocery shopping today for the first time since the crap hit the fan with COVID-19, and I was just trying to get in and get out as fast as possible. I kept to myself and had headphones in, but when I was in the checkout line, a woman in her 40s came up to me, crosses the six foot lines, and told me, you should put that baby formula back. You don't need it, and you're taking it away from actual babies that need it. Ones like my nephew. Now, I had two tubs of formula in my cart for my eight month old daughter. I told her that I did have a baby, and she just scoffed and said, likely story, where's your baby? And then went back to join her partner in line. I'm 18 and have a baby face, so I guess she thought I couldn't have a baby? I know it's not outrageous like a lot of entitled parent stories, but it still kind of upset me. What the hell did she think you were doing with formula if you didn't have a baby? Edit, apparently there's a whole group of black market selling, drug cutting, breasty tea drinking people out there that I had no idea existed. What a fun new fact to know about the world. And yeah, here in Australia, we have issues of people buying formula just to sell it for three to four times the price back in China. That's a thing. Causes a lot of problems at Woolies and Coles. No, 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 not the boys. And our next post is by a user, Leos1023, titled, Be roommates with my son and give them your games and food. Hey people of Reddit, this isn't my story, but it's my cousin's. My cousins and their roommate told me this story last January. I thought it was funny, so I thought that I'd share. By the way, cousin and his roommate are both 16, and my little cousin is 12. A entitled mum demanded that her 12-year-old first-year son be allowed to live in the room with my cousin and their roommate. Meet everybody. OC, older cousin. LC, little cousin. RM, roommate. EM, entitled mum. EK, entitled kid. SG, security guard. EKRM, entitled kid's roommate. The setting. My cousins go to a very elite private all boys school, grades six to 12 in the New England region of the United States. So it's not uncommon to encounter an entitled parent and kid here or there. Now, let me state that my cousins are not entitled. They apply for financial aid and have campus jobs to afford a $60,000 a year tuition. Now, my older cousin is the student body president of the school. Because of this, the president gets a room that is 1,200 square feet, has a fully functioning kitchen and bathroom. The room also has a large living space, balcony, and office. The other rooms just have two beds, two closets, one desk, and a small window there around 150 square feet. Because my little cousin is related to older cousin, he was allowed to live there in the room versus the standard dorms. Cousin's roommate was also the student body treasurer, so the dean allowed him to live in the room too because he was my cousin's friend. With three guys living together, there was a surplus of video games and junk food. Just guys being guys. With the new semester starting, student body officers have to help with orientation, helping the parents get the first year students settled in. Because little cousin was already settled in, he was just playing video games on the PS4 with the door open. Q entitled mother and kid. Entitled mother's nice at first and is like, excuse me, yes? I am looking for my son's dorm, and I can't find it. Can you help me? Hey, I'm new here myself, so I don't know much. My brother is responsible for helping first years, so let me call him. Entitled mother and her son wait for about 25 minutes for oldest cousin to arrive. So little cousin was playing games with entitled kid on the PS4 eating junk food and showed them around the room. Older cousin arrives, and he says, hey, I'm older cousin. You must be the mum trying to find her son's dorm. The entitled mother, now rude, says, yes, I've been waiting for someone to help me. Older cousin first just disregards her tone, as orientation day is hard. Older cousin goes on his phone with the info that the mum gives and directs her. Apparently, entitled kid only lives down the hallway to the left. Entitled mum leaves with entitled kid and his luggage and leave. 
Entitled Kid says in that god-awful voice as he's leaving, I want to play more games. Entitled Mom says, you can later. Older Cousin has this jeez look on his face, closes the door, and plays on the PS4 with Little Cousin. Ten minutes later, there are loud bangs on the door. Older Cousin sees who it is. It's Entitled Mom and her brat that have returned with his luggage. Entitled Mother says, I need your help now. Her brat runs to the PS4. Uh, what seems to be the problem? Entitled Mother starts whining. My son's room is small, it's not like this one. Who do we talk to about this? Um, I'm sorry if you're unsatisfied with your living situation, you'll have to talk to a counselor about his situation. And nobody has a room like this one because I'm the president. The entitled kid starts rummaging through games. Do you have Fortnite? Hey, put that down. Don't talk to my son that way. Besides, my son needs more living space. Do something. At this time, entitled kid is still rummaging. Then, little cousin pushes him to the side and locks the game cabinet, and he starts screaming. Roommate was also returning to the room with his lunch. Entitled kid screams, I want to play games. Little cousin says, this is our room, and you can't use my things if I don't want you to. He screams, I wanna. What's going on? Entitled mother interrupts. These boys won't help me find a room like this one for my son. Oh, that's impossible. This is the only room that is like this one. Besides, this room is only for the president. Entitled mother condescendingly says, then how come you're here? Roommate explains. Little cousin is related to older cousin, so he can stay here. I'm in student government with older cousin and allows me to live here. Yeah, I told her that. Entitled mother then says to older cousin and roommate, you should let my son live here. Entitled kid overhears his mom. He now thinks that he lives in the room. He goes to the fridge and tries to get a soda. Little cousin blocks him and says, you are not our guest, nor do you live here. Don't touch our food. F you, this is my room too, and you have to share. Older cousin then says to get her kid out because he is a nuisance and bothering my brother. No. Older cousin and roommate are not having it. They ask her politely yet firmly to leave. Entitled mother walks in and proceeds to unpack her son's luggage. Entitled kid is also having a fit because little cousin isn't letting entitled kid have any food. Mum, he won't let me have some donuts. Don't worry, mummy will help after I unpack you. Older cousin and roommate firmly say, your son isn't living here. Yes, he is. My son is an angel. You should be glad to be friends with him. I am not interested in living or being friends with your son. Leave. Now. Entitled mum ignores older cousin and continues to unpack with her entitled kid screaming, I want donuts. He then screams at little cousin, I want to play your games. Little cousin says no. The kid then starts screaming high-pitched. Older cousin, little cousin, and roommates have had enough of this charade, and then proceed to drag them out and throw his luggage in the hallway and lock the door. Entitled mum and son continue to bang and howl. Entitled mother promises that she'll get her son back in, so she leaves. At this time, friends were coming over, and someone accidentally let entitled kid in the room. People confused ask who he is. Entitled Kid says, I'm Entitled Kid, live here. Entitled Kid then started demanding to use the PS4. Oldest Cousin sees him and kicks him out again, with him shouting, I want to stay. His mum then returns with a security guard. These boys kicked my son out of his room. Do something. Security guard says, Lady, I know for a fact that your son doesn't live here. He needs to stay here. This room is much better than the other ones. Security guard then asks if the mum is bothering them. Everybody says yes. He says, I'll take care of the mum, and asks cousin to take care of the kid. Entitled kid is dragged out again. Entitled kid shouts, my daddy will F you up for this. The mum was escorted off of the campus grounds. Older cousin and roommate forcibly moved entitled kid into his room for him. Little cousin ended up becoming friends with entitled kid's roommates as the months have passed. Entitled Kid has been so bratty and annoying that Entitled Kid's roommate has had sleepovers with Little Cousin almost every night. Because of this, Entitled Kid packs an overnight bag and almost always follows his roommate and demands to be let in. I was told it goes down like this. Let me in, roomie. You can't have a sleepover without me. 
Go away, we're never letting you in. I want to see my roomie, he'll vouch for me. You can't play video games or have a sleepover without me. Entitled Kid's roommate comes out and puts his ice cream on the table. He says, I stay here four to five days a week because I need a break from you. Please go away. Oh my god, traitor. So much for loyalty. The least you can do is share that ice cream. Roommate gets up and closes the door. Oh, oh my god, let me in. I'm not playing. My cousins, roommates, and entitled kids' roommates turn the volume on the TV louder and tune out his pleas and crying. They later woke up to him sleeping at the front of the door at 6 a.m. He stayed there for 10 hours. I know it was a long story, so thanks for sticking through it all. If you want an update about Entitled Kid, I'll ask my cousins to share more stories, which I'm sure they have plenty of. Hey, and don't you worry, we have an update. Be roommates with my son and give him your games and food. Hey people of Reddit, my cousins gave me a recent update about the Entitled Mum and her Entitled Son that has been harassing them during the school year. If you haven't read my first post, stop and read the first one so you can understand the setting. So my cousins, their roommate and Entitled Kid's roommate. We're going on vacation President's Day weekend. Entitled Mum demanded that her son be allowed to vacation to New York City with them. This was on Entitled People, but my cousin said I should also post here to share the love. So Entitled Kid's roommate's parents live in New York City around Fifth Avenue. For those of you who don't know, Fifth Avenue is some of the most expensive real estate in the city. Entitled Kid's roommate's parents were allowing my cousins and their roommates to stay in New York for free, with meals included because they are friends with Entitled Kid's roommate. All my cousins had to do was drive there, which is around three hours. As Entitled Kid has been harassing my cousins, their roommate and his roommate's semester, he overheard the situation and he demanded to go. When his attempts to go fails, he then calls his mum who drives from another state to demand that the gang take her son on vacation with them. Meet everybody. Older cousin, little cousin, roommate, entitled mum, entitled kid, security captain, the dean, and entitled kid's roommate. So, in February, on the 20th, my cousins, their roommate, and entitled kid's roommate are talking to little cousin to the rest of the gang to try to get a game plan together for the New York trip. Entitled kid hears entitled kid's roommate's phone call about planning the trip, and then it goes as followed. Um, hey, where are you going? Um, home to New York with the guys? Why? Can I come too? Please? I think not. Why not? I don't want you at my house or around my family. Entitled Kid then gets pissed and starts getting upset. Then Entitled Kid's roommate then goes to the room to hang with my cousins and their roommate. Entitled Kid then follows. The door is shut in his face. Let me in! Everyone tells him to go away, and they proceeded to plan for vacation. Entitled Kid then proceeds to say, Let me in or I'll get my mum. Everyone knows that his mum lives another state away. So everyone was like, go get her then. The gang then proceeded to plan the New York trip with the Entitled Kid begging to be let in. This proceeded for three hours, and then his mum came. She drove from the next state over. She knocked on the door, they opened it, and it went like this. Just so you know, my older cousin didn't remember who Entitled Mum was at first, because it had been a month since he'd last saw her, but her behavior soon jogged his memory. Around this time, everyone was preparing to leave, as they had made all the final preparations. Older cousin's like, hello, can I help you? Yes, my son says you won't let him go to New York with you guys. Why won't you? Older cousin has this why me look on his face, and he says, I'm sure that you remember our last conversation. Me, my roommate, and brother want nothing to do with your son. This place where we're staying is Entitled Kid's roommate's house, and he has expressed that he doesn't want him to come. Entitled Mother and Kid looked pissed, and she says that she can pay for her son to go if that's the problem. Then, Little Cousin gets involved, and says, Look, it doesn't matter that you can pay for him to go, we just don't want him to go. He is going. Don't you know how I am? How dare you speak to me that way? My son will be going with you on this trip, and that's that. Then Entitled Kid's roommate gets involved. Says, hey, I don't want your kid at my house. Seriously, he has been bothering me all semester, and has made things harder for me. 
I sure as hell don't want him anywhere near my family or my home. Entitled Kid butts in with his attitude and says, Oh my god, why do you have to be so mean? You spent all of your time here and never invite me. You have to let me come and make it up to me. No, I don't, it's my house. Then Entitled Kid starts wailing and demands his mum let him go to New York with them. Older cousin, with an annoyed, sarcastic voice says, Well, nice seeing you again. Bye. The gang proceeds to lock up the room and bring the luggage down to the car. Everyone goes on last bathroom break before going on the road. However, little cousin didn't lock the car. For those of you that know, Fords have a keypad on the driver door to lock and unlock the car. Little cousin didn't press the buttons right and the car didn't lock. When the gang came back to the car, Entitled Kid was in the back seat with headphones on, with his mum waving as she drives away. It goes as follows. Hey, come back. Have fun in New York. The gang realizes that her kid has just been dumped on them and that they are stuck. Little cousin says, we should call security. So older cousin does. They explain on the phone that the entitled mother dumped her kid on them and that we are bringing him over because he is not their responsibility. Entitled Kid takes off his earphones and says, Come on already, get this crap box 94 Crown Victoria in gear. Now the security guard is around half a mile from the dorm. So for a while, Entitled Kid had this look on his face like he had won. The gang pulls up to the security office, his smirk disappears. As both the captain of the school and the dean were there. The captain says, So you want to explain what you're doing in older cousin's car? Entitled Kid is sweating bullets and nervously says, I'm going on vacation. My mom said I could. The captain then says to the gang, is this true? Everyone's like, no. His mom just demanded that we let him go. She put him in and drove off. The captain then orders Entitled Kid out of the car. Entitled Kid then asks for older cousin to pop the trunk so that he can get his bag out. Everyone just has this, you gotta be kidding look when he says that. The Dean, who I'm told is a very kind old man, gave Entitled Kid a very firm talking to. It went like this. In my 35 years, I've never had to deal with a more petulant child than you. It was light on your punishment the first time. It won't be the case this time. Your behavior is unexceptionable. You have put me in an impossible position. The Dean and the Captain take Entitled Kid away and his was severely punished. He was put on probation, so that meant he couldn't participate in sports or other events. He was given 20 days detention doing landscaping, and he, a security guard, personally escort him to and from classes. All in all, the gang had a pretty good vacation. Entitled Mum did call Entitled Kid's roommate's phone to lay into everybody. She was quickly blocked, and the gang hasn't heard from her since. Alright, that was long. And our next post is by Yeet or Be Yeeted. Titled, Entitled Kid Let His Cat Kill My Rabbit, and Then Entitled Mother Blames It On Me. So, I have two bunnies. Floppy, three, and Bun, eight. I don't know where I came up with the names, but whatever. I also was never in a bad relationship with the Entitled Mother or the Entitled Kid. The fence between the houses was also relatively short. So, my bunnies are free roam in my house. I had them in my backyard, in a playpen that is big enough but has mesh walls and an open ceiling. I go inside to get them their food, and as I'm coming out, I see Entitled Kid and his cat trying to pick up the bunny to play, I guess, with the cat. I come rushing out and try to stop them because cats aren't exactly gentle. I guess I wasn't fast enough because all of a sudden it's a mess of blood. I see my eight-year-old bunny on the ground dead. I obviously am very upset, but I tell Entitled Kid to leave and I bring Floppy inside. He does not leave, but Kitty just wants to play with the bunnies. I tell him, sorry bud, cats and bunnies don't get along together very well. I try to keep my cool and he ends up leaving. I call my best friend who originally gave me Bun and she said she was a few minutes away. I break down in tears. These were like my kids. They were with me through everything and now one was gone. She arrives and she comforts me. We then hear a knock on the door. Anna, our friend, answers it, and it's the Entitled Mother. She asks who it is, and I tell her it's Entitled Kid's mum. Now listen, Anna can get very defensive about things. This pissed her off. 
She says, I can't believe that you didn't let Entitled Mother's cat play with your bunnies. Now one is dead, and everyone has to look at it. Just give us your other one. I'll give it back in a week. Anna went off. Your stupid cat killed my best friend's rabbits. You can't even apologize. How dare you? That was her ESA, emotional support animal, and she was. Well, she has another. Then sighs and says, these people need support animals? They must be crazy. Anna ended up shutting the door in her face, and I'm still getting over it. Rip Bun 2012 to 2020. And our next post is by user Fred's Red, titled, My son wants a go in your electronic wheelchair. Get out so he can have a go. Now, I've been browsing this sub for a while and never thought I would post on here. Oh, how I was wrong. Backstory. I'm a 29-year-old female and have been confined to a wheelchair since I was 17. I'm a quadriplegic and can use a manual wheelchair at home, but use a power wheelchair in public for practical reasons. I have mostly full use of my upper body and partial use of my lower body. I've been mistaken for a paraplegic a few times. This happened a few months ago, before the crap hit the fan with COVID-19 in my town. I was downtown shopping for supplies for my inevitable self-isolation, when I heard a deafening squeal of a child about 12. Ooh, that's a cool scooter. How fast does it go? Thanks, little man. Yeah, it goes pretty fast. Can I have a go? Me, thinking he meant sit on my lap and I drive him around, which in another scenario I would have been happy to do, COVID-19 and all. Sorry, dude, but not today. The kid says, aw, okay, and stomps away, and I thought that was the end of it. But you know, I wouldn't be here if it was. A few minutes later, I hear the ground start to tremble as the Megatron Karen approaches. Oh boy, I thought, this is gonna be fun. Excuse me, what did you say to my son? I'm confused, I'm like, ah, uh, he wanted a ride in my wheelchair. I said no. What did you just say to me? You need to respect your elders and not talk down to my poor little angel. You don't need that wheelchair. I know your legs work. You're just faking it to get attention. Now let my son have a ride. She wouldn't have been much older than 35, so obviously not my elder. But even if my nan spoke to me like that, I wouldn't reply kindly. Me with all of my patients officially gone, my wheelchair costs more than your car, and you want me to miraculously heal out of my chair so your dirty crotch goblin can take a joyride? Okay. Edit, crotch goblin was smirking at me the entire time. Here is where the story gets graphic. I have hypermobility, which makes my joints extremely flexible, and dislocation easy and relatively painless. I also have titanium screws inside my neck that creak loudly when I move a certain way. Bring on the Frankenstein. I leaned forwards, pushed down on my right arm, dislocating my shoulder blade with a loud pop as I twisted my neck to make it creak, then pushed down with my left hand to contort my arm and hand in an unnatural position. This all happened in a few seconds, but it was enough to make Karen, red-faced and horrified, scream out, Stop! It's okay! Entitled kid, let's go! Ah! And they hurried out of the store. I could hear laughter coming from behind me, as a friend who works there walked up to me and said, That was mean. He knew me well and had seen me pull that trick before. Needless to say, I never had an issue like that again. It's a small town, and news travels fast. Don't mess with the girl in the wheelchair. Edit, for those insisting I must be a troll because I don't know the difference between a quadriplegic and a paraplegic, look up incomplete quadriplegic. And one of my stories about when I worked at Target, I was 16 at the time of that story. My injury happened when I was 17. All right, and our next post is by Midness25, titled, My Uncle's Wife. So, I grew up a pretty conservative Christian. My mum was born a Mennonite in a colony, but left around 16. My sister and I were raised in pants only and minimum makeup before 18. Like, if you could tell you were wearing any, it was too much. Anyway, nobody likes my uncle's wife. She has to be better than everyone else in every way, and it drives us all nuts. They were coming over once for Thanksgiving, I think. So my mum taught me how to put eyeliner in. Crazy, I know. 
When she got to our house, she flipped her crap saying I can't wear makeup in front of her daughters, ages 10 and 8, because it'll influence them. I was told to go take it off at once, so my mom and I walked into the bathroom and she made it even thicker and sent me out. Best day of my life. For Christmas that year, we dyed my hair hot pink, and her face when she saw that makes me happy to this day. Her older daughter chose blue, and her younger one chose purple. Alright, and with that said, we're on to our next post by G Holland 193 titled, Entitled Mom Tries to Take My Headphones. So this was way before the current quarantine, so don't get mad at me. EM Entitled Mom, EC Entitled Child, Me is Me. So a bit of information before I start. 1. I am Russian. 2. I was born in Russia. 3. I speak fluent Russian. And 4. I own a pair of Astro A38s, Bluetooth headphones. So I was on my way to a friend's house, and I decided to take the bus. Terrible idea, as I hate being around other people that I don't know. Entitled Child, probably around 7, and Entitled Mum was sitting in the seat across from me, and I tried not to pay too much attention to them. I must have had my music a bit too loud, and caught the attention of the entitled child. He looks at me, almost like a possessed doll snaps its neck at a small child in a horror movie. He obviously can only hear that there is some sort of music, but he wouldn't want it if he knew what I was listening to. I'm a drummer, and I listen to metal music. I am also very protective of my stuff. He's like, I want music! Sorry kid, not gonna give you my headphones. Now, Entitled Child starts crying, basically bawling. That caught the attention of Entitled Mother, a hulking piece of... something. She says, can you please lend him your headphones? He really likes music, and he's only a boy. He won't do anything. Sorry, no. These are expensive and the music isn't suitable for children. Look, I tried not to be rude as I didn't want to cause a scene. Obviously, she didn't care as she continued to pester me. Meanwhile, the little crap bag continues to get louder and louder with each choked cry. Entitled Mom is like, please give him your headphones. She seemed to be getting short on her temper. I was starting to get annoyed, so I packed them away in their protective case. This case was black and kind of looks like a gun cast, to be honest. This angered Entitled Mother. She's like, give me your headphones. She started to be sounding more and more commanding as time went on. I say, no. I start to realize what might happen, and thought about standing up, but didn't, as I didn't want to cause a scene. And then, the inevitable happened. She says under her breath, then I'll just have to take them from you. She proceeds to basically lunge at me, trying to grab my bag. Me trying to stop her, restraining me. Translation, leave me alone. Ostav menye vipokoye. Did you just speak Slavic? I think, looking back at this, she was actually brain dead. She then starts to scream that I am here without a passport and that I am a spy for the Russian government, trying to stop me from getting off of the bus. But all that does is make people stare at her. I run off of the bus, nearly about to cry at this point, and the thought about going to the police. But there was no point, as I couldn't remember her face that well. Astro Gaming doesn't produce the A38 Bluetooth gaming headset anymore, although you can probably find them on a reselling website like eBay, or something like that. I do recommend their line of A40 headsets though. The nerve of some people! Please respect the Russian people. The government and the people are completely different. Alright, and our next post is by user Sweet Satan Love. Titled, Entitled Aunt Tries to Convince Me to Fit Her Standards of Girliness by Shaming Me Basically. Okay, so this is about my mother's side of the family. There are two stories I can think of right now. P.S. I don't have an attitude issue as suggested by the comments. I'm a nice person. I always talk nicely to everyone and respect my elders, except the ones who don't deserve it. Context for the stories. Me and my family had moved to my maternal grandparents' house to help them in their old age. Now that house has three floors. One was bought by someone, one was ours, and the ground floor was my grandparents where my divorced auntie and my uncle lived. They were dependent as neither of them wanted to work, so we had to help them out. 
Now, a few years ago, my grandfather died and my aunt would sit in the living room all day and watch TV. Now, I had to hang out downstairs because of some issues that I don't want to talk about, so I was just on my PC all day and sometimes talk to my friends or my boyfriend. Even though we lived there, we had basically no personal right over the floor we lived in. This part is important for one story. Okay, first thing happened with the lazy aunt, lol. So I just hung out with her in the room all day long, and I would just mind my own business all the time, not talking to her. She was the one who started muttering crap for no reason. Now, I'm a tomboy, and it's very clear that I'm not girly from the way I dress and behave. That's just triggered her so much. It was a normal day, and we were sitting around in crap. That bat crap crazy woman suddenly just starts calling me crap like, unladylike, uncultured, sick in my mind, ill-mannered, etc. I was like, lady, what the hell? Now here is how our conversation went after this. Auntie's like, you know you shouldn't wear those clothes at all. You're fat and it makes you look very bad. You should lose your weight and then you'll look more presentable, maybe. Now, I know that wasn't true, because I had been getting compliments all fudge and day long. So I just sat there in silence. You should be more like a girl. Cross your legs. Mm-hmm. You know this thing you call yourself? A tomboy is a disease. Get yourself fixed. Now, I was angry AF. It's not a disease, you 18th century hag. It's who I am. No, listen to your elders. I am correct. You have a disease. So me, knowing this would go nowhere, I say, yeah, okay. I mean, who the hell calls a personality trait a disease? You shouldn't talk to boys as well. They'll mistreat you. I, for some dumb reason, open my mouth and say, oh, but all I have are male friends. She looks at me with eyes wide open and an angry stare. What? Oh no, do you want to get mistreated by those guys? Keep yourself away from them or else I won't let you get out of this house. Who the hell do you think you are to do that? I'm family and family protects each other. Yeah, right. Quiet down and stop disturbing me. I will tell your mum to break off your friendships with all your boyfriends. It does not mean if I'm with a guy that he is my boyfriend. Now shut up, because you have no right over my life and my social life. Yes, I do, because your mum is crazy and doesn't know how to raise her daughters. Even your sister is like you, always with boys. Don't come to me when you get mistreated. Fools learn by their own experience, you know? I'm infuriated, and I just say, shut up! You have no right to say all this, and no right to call my mother crazy. You are the crazy one. Shut up! Your parents haven't taught you to respect your elders. Your father killed my father, and now he's sending his daughter here to kill me with her disrespect. I say, this is also my house, not yours. Ours. I'm here to see my grandmother. What you gonna do about it? Kick me out? You can't even move me an inch, and as for my dad, if you say any other word about him, I will throw this chair at your head. So just shut up and leave my family alone. She didn't say anything after that and started mumbling to herself. Also, she didn't bother me again for my ladylikeness, but still insulted my family. I can post those conversations too if I can remember them. And I have one more story about the other aunt, so you can check that out as well. Alright guys, that's all for today. Tell me what you thought about these Entitled Parent stories. Hope you enjoyed them and you're looking forward to some more Entitled People. Maybe some Pro Revenge as well. Whatever I feel like reading out today, I guess. Um, tell me what you thought about it down in the comments. I want to get this to like a thousand likes if we can. That would be pretty lit. Yeah, tell me what you guys thought. Anyways, this has been Marky. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.